So a number of you have written to me in the past couple of days asking about this crazy art electronics piece that I've been working on. Um, I want to take a few minutes just to like give you the evolution of it and tell you why I landed on where I got. I, most of you know that in the past few months I've been trying to teach myself electronics. I built some really simple kit pieces from Adafruit that were kind of nice. Started experimenting a little bit with Arduino. Um, you can see the back of Oh, here's another one. Here's an Arduino board. What I like about Arduino is it's kind of designed for guys like me. Um, people that want to make things that don't really have a, any sort of any background in engineering, but really have sort of an understanding of how things work. It's a pretty simple design. It allows you to have analog inputs and digital outputs or vice versa. So essentially it's made so that it can sense things and then react to it. So that alone allows it to be sort of lends itself for toy making. Um, I've been looking for a project that wasn't, you know, something that looks like it came out of a kit or something that looks, you know, sort of janky makery and wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I've been doing a lot of costuming in the past year or so and after last year's Burning Man event, a good friend of mine had this sort of steampunk leather bracer like thing made that, you know, is a, a little homage to sewing because I've been doing all the costuming and it was really just sort of a nice, you know, sort of a costumey accent piece that Lord knows you can only wear just about at Burning Man or some steampunk festival. But it did give me an idea. You know, I wanted to take and merge this with this. So it, the thing I like about this is the beautiful object and with like a lot of steampunk things, they're beautiful objects, but sometimes they don't really do much. I wanted to like sort of take this and make it, you know, sort of do something. So I started thinking about it and what I eventually came up with was this piece. Um, it's a bracer. You can see on the back of it, it's laces up. So I wear it on my right arm. It has a number of features on it. It's um, all based on a small Arduino wearable platform called Flora. Again, this is by Adafruit. I really like this platform because one, it's just a beautiful object to look at. In fact, you'll notice that I made it so that there's this aperture hole in the center of the piece so that you can only see in to see the guts of it. I think of sort of it as like Pompidou Center meets Steampunk meets Cyberpunk. So I'm trying to like show the works of it, but try and do it in an artful enough way that it shows that all of these sort of maker projects don't have to be quite so stringy and jangly looking once they're done. Some of the features of this, uh, this is an accelerometer. It'll allow me to do compass readings. So when it's lit up, you'll be able to sort of get a compass bearing for where you are. Uh, it allowed me to do sort of acceleration effects so I could have it change color when I swing my arm or something like that. It allowed me to do pendulum. It allows me uh, a few effects, none of which yet I've written the code for. I know that the, the component works, the data's pouring it in, into the, the Flora unit, but I really haven't really dug into the Arduino. The, my maker friend and sort of collaborator Kip and I work a little bit more on the code part and I was just trying to get the hardware nailed at first. These switches over here are basically dip switches that give me, if my binary sort of math is right, eight different states that I can set the unit into. It has 12 um, RGB pixels built into it. There's one, it's a small one. If you look, you can see that there's a plus and a minus maybe. I can't, don't know if there's enough detail in the video that's you know, positive and negative, and then the sort of data in and data out. You can chain them all together. I have 12 in this piece that sort of form a clock face. You can see them sort of down along here. The yellow in between is the jump wires that connects them all together. I wired it so that each one had its own power and ground. That made a little bit of extra work, but it also means that if any of these pixels ever goes bad, it's a lot easier to replace. I made a couple of little projects with these in the past and I've noticed that sometimes the pixels are not as robust as I would like for them to be, but they are nice. So again, going back to this, I think that I'll have eight different states that I can set it in. So I can use the accelerometer in a couple of the different ways. I can pre-program some light shows to play. And I also have 
on the other side over here, a GPS built in. This GPS should allow me to, I'm hoping, pull down the time at a periodic basis so I could have a clock be one of the settings so the lights will light up like a clock. And then I could also have it do all sorts of clever things of, you know, pick some sort of coordinates and as I get closer or further away from it, it beacons or I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I know, like I said, all of the components work and the pieces work together. Um, it's all run on a 3.7 volt battery with a nice little pocket I built inside there to sort of hide that. Put a switch on it. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. You can see the motherboard begin to light up there a little bit. And you can also see that the GPS is saying I'm getting starting to think and get data as well from the satellites. Kind of wish, you know, the, the accelerometer had a little bit of a LED on it too, but now you can see it's all lit up. Lit up. And you can see the ground plastic piece that I made on top is intended to work like a lens so that it makes each one of the pixel points look more like um, a, a line rather than a point. Last thing I want to note is like all of this detailing around the edges, all of these little coils that make it look a little bit octopus-like are made out of Sugru. Sugru is an air-drying moldable silicon product that this is the first time that I've used it in anything. Each one of these uh, pixels is sitting on a little bed of it so that it doesn't short out. All of this armature is made in copper. Basically, I took just some plain copper wire that I got at the Home Depot and just sort of shaped it into all of these pieces, wrapped it in smaller copper wire, and then got it hot and put a little solder on it. So it's basically soldered copper on copper. All of the armature below it, the little curved piece that sort of sits over the leather, is also copper as well. Speaking of the leather, what I did for the leather is I got some um, blank pieces of veg tan leather that you would use to make, I don't know, belts or uh, world wrestling championship belts or something. I don't know. Anyway, think tool leather. It's what you'd use to make saddles. That's a better way of putting it. It's a saddle material. So I got a piece of that, cut it to the shape I want, put some grommets in it to make it, you know, nice and finished looking. Then I got some Phoebing's dye. Interesting about Phoebing's dye, the last time I used this stuff was probably in the late 70s in the 4-H when I was making some sort of red deck leather product. And the packaging has not changed one bit since like 1978. So it was really, it was really sort of a nostalgic moment when this thing came walking into my house. Anyway, did all that, tooled it, sort of tooled the edges a little bit, put lots of holes in it to, to attach all the components, and then put this nice little copper octopus here because it's kind of like a little sign for me. And it was a just sort of a little, nice little Victorian sort of steampunk detail that sort of finished the piece out. I hadn't named it yet. I don't even know what to call this thing. Um, I'm really happy with it. I'm looking forward to doing a little bit of programming to actually make it do a little bit more sense tricks rather than just pre-programmed ones. I mean, that was part of the whole thing with the Arduino is if it's just playing pre-programmed light shows, it's really not sensing anything and not doing what Arduino is good for. So hopefully in the next day or so, this thing will be what I designed it to be. So that's it. I hope that gives you guys a little bit better understanding of what I've been looking, working on, and I hope you like it.